the disinflationary process, the process of getting inflation down, has begun. Crypto markets and equities have likewise been euphoric over the last about 45 days, which has led to an absolute reboot of the FOMO machine here in crypto. Now, I told you guys since the beginning of the year, I've been dabbling a little bit in the markets, but it's important to realize what Jerome Powell just said is an absolute shot of dopamine right into the veins of the bulls. Let's take another look at what he said, then I'll break down exactly why the markets are receiving this in an exciting way and what this means for the current market, how I'm playing this, and this will be one of my most important market updates before I begin a new type of content. So make sure you watch this one front to back because I'm going to be outlining everything that I think about the current market cycle. Now, I want to reiterate that Jerome Powell's speech today comes on the heels of what was seen as a super dovish, meaning bullish, press conference at the last FOMC minutes meeting. Now, in between today and that meeting, we had this jobs report, which came in extremely overheated, leaving many people to think, oh no, the Fed now needs to pivot into a hawkish or bearish posturing to recover and force the economy back into disinflation. But that's not at all what Jerome Powell said today. In fact, he goes on to say that he believes the disinflationary process will start truly manifesting in the housing sector and really overall starting to take flight towards that 2% mark in 2024. These are the very early stages of disinflation. So the services sector really, except for housing services, uh, is not really showing any, any disinflation yet. So our message really was this process is likely to take quite a bit of time. Uh, it's not going to be, uh, we don't think, smooth. It's probably going to be bumpy. And so we think that we're going to need to do further rate increases, as we said, and we, we think that we'll need to hold policy at a restrictive level for a period of time. Then comes the, uh, the, the uh, labor market report for January. And it's very strong. It's certainly stronger than anyone I know expected. <clears throat> and so, but, but I would say, we didn't expect it to be this strong, but I would say it, it kind of shows you why we think that this will be a, a, a process that takes a significant period of time. It, the, the labor market's extraordinarily strong. And by the way, it's good. It's a good thing that inflation has started to come down without it, that has not happened at the, at the cost of strong labor markets. So this is where Jay Powell waddles around and sort of goes between, hey, look, this is going to take some time. We said something super dovish, but now we're coming back and we saw the labor statistics. But then he says, hey, look, it's actually good that we're seeing inflation come down and labor stay strong. He's kind of painting the picture that you're getting this disinflationary soft landing approach. I will say personally, I have not seen Jerome Powell this cool, calm and collected and confident in quite some time. Now, the TLDR here is everybody feels like Jerome Powell really pumped the markets and tried to give his best interpretation that the Fed's plan is working. Now, what happened during the press conference was this absolute demonic spike in price. Now, when you see stuff like this, what you see is what we call a stop run. That means when there's a ton of leverage in the market, people betting that the market's going to go down or up in a dramatic fashion. And if you're betting right now and speculating on FOMC or anything the Fed says, you're a degenerate gambler and you need help, call 911 immediately. And that's because stuff like this happens. And so if you're leveraged in any direction, you're going to get liquidated if you're getting too aggressive here because these types of moves are absolutely crazy. And as you can see, this wasn't a genuine upswing yet. We essentially pumped here to wreck the shorts and then we dumped down to wreck the longs. And now we begin what looks like a little bit of an uptrend. But bear in mind, Bitcoin sitting almost neutral up a little bit on the day. So what does it all mean? What it means is that Jerome Powell is now talking sweet to the market. It sort of reinforces the belief that maybe the worst is over here from the Fed tightening cycle. But let's now talk about the biggest narrative in finance, because some of the people that have nailed the 2022 bear market, some of the most trusted names in macro, and some of the most beloved bears in the entire financial world have been ad nauseum talking about something called the big flip. The big flip has been popularized by one crypto account in specific called Carlo Casio. We cover Carlo's work a lot. He's been crushing it through 2022. Here you can see he's posting the big flip in response to a ECB survey showing that the rise of inflation expectations despite energy prices falling. Now, effectively, the big flip is the idea that inflation is going to reaccelerate as conditions loosen, meaning that what the Fed just did in pumping the markets, which we all love to see it, is going to lead to a reaccelerate 
acceleration of inflation. And then the double down by the Fed to tighten conditions is going to come in like a Miley Cyrus wrecking ball and completely ruin the hopes and dreams that we had for this crypto and equities bull run. And you can see here that in recent days, the dollar DXY has been absolutely ripping. Now, the reacceleration of inflation would come with the expectation that they will tighten financial conditions and effectively strengthen the dollar. So that's essentially what the markets are now betting on is that inflation is going to run. They're going to increase interest rates and essentially make the dollar even more valuable. And so essentially the markets are front running that leading people to believe that this big flip thing is coming. But here's where it gets interesting. You see, a really big flip can only occur once a nice big rally has taken place. Now, both Wifey and Carlo acknowledge that this Goldilocks period, like we've been talking about since the beginning of the year, might go on for quite some time. The thing is, this will most likely be a stairs up and elevator down type drop, meaning if you're completely degenerately into the market, it'll probably be hard to hedge your risk. As we can see here, Carlo posts this screenshot. Quick question. I see hashtag big flip everywhere. Do you think stocks are headed higher and or lower? Lower. It's big flip because they go higher first. That move will probably culminate soon with a head fake. Now, believe me, no one loves seeing numbers like this more than I do. I absolutely love bullish numbers, and I sincerely hope that this particular run goes on very long. In fact, I do believe that there is more gas left in the tank, especially with the Fed talking so sweetly to the markets like this. In my opinion, given what Jerome Powell just said, it's going to take a whole lot of negativity to actually bring down the markets, meaning we need a super hot inflation print for the Fed to then switch around their game plan. Or we need housing prices to start dramatically plummeting as they are scheduled to do at some point later in the year. And we actually have a huge video coming on housing, one that will completely shock you as the data that we've been putting together will lead you to understand why a massive housing collapse could still be in the works. And housing collapse, we all know, would have ripples throughout the mainstream equity markets and beyond. But the real question is, what could actually end this party? I believe that the charts are pumping because they're oversold, Bitcoin was oversold, crypto was way oversold, and they were due for a pump. But do the charts have anything else they could be telling us? Well, it's worth noting our boy Ben Cowan over there, a fellow crypto tuber, has pointed out that the first weekly death cross on Bitcoin could be fast approaching. That's right, Bitcoin has never seen these two moving averages cross. The simple way to view this is that it's a negative event on the charts, and this one on the weekly time frame has literally never occurred in the history of Bitcoin. It almost happened once in 2015, but the crisis was averted by a massive pump in Bitcoin. Will that happen again? We'll just have to wait and see. Again, as much as sentiment isn't the only dictator, we do know that the markets got really bearish, myself included. And that's because the macroeconomic picture is very bearish. But in the age of YouTube and TikTok investing, when everybody knows about a narrative, well, that actually makes it less likely to play out. So to me, this bear market rally or this echo bubble, whatever you call what's happening right now, could have some significant more steam in the tank. But I do want to point out a few pieces of data. First, First of all, euphoria is something you have to absolutely be clear of. Whenever the markets rally for an extended period of time, weeks or months without fail, everything goes up in unison. You have to be prepared for things to correct in some degree. Honestly, I think of all the takes you should pay attention to, this one is one of the most salient. GCR says, enjoy these market conditions while they last. Goldilocks, that's what we've been talking about. The 2019 echo bubble sustained for 48 days from the 6K reclaim to top. Now, of course, he's counting on the Bitcoin chart, not from the bottom here, the beginning of 2019, where really the uptrend started. He's counting all the way from here when it reclaimed 6K, which was this prior level of support, which once it busted through was a massive significant level. So again, there was this run from February all the way into May before he's counting that 49 days, just to be very clear, or 48 days rather. Now, to be fair, maybe we already achieved that by busting through this prior level, which was essentially like the $20,000 level. Again, you can't take a prior pattern and just completely apply it here. So let's go ahead and take a cautious approach and understand that we might actually be looking at that 20K level as the beginning of the timer. Now, here's the thing that I find the most important, right? 
Although risk assets have rallied for weeks, the total market cap for alts has been flat since January 20th. Capital is shifting from one narrative to the next without any underlying belief you would see in a true bull market. It's an echo. Now, I will point out here that the total three, the crypto market cap excluding Bitcoin and ETH, has actually been up 6% since January 20th. So this isn't completely accurate. There has been some increase in market cap since January 20th. So here's the part you've been waiting for. What should you be doing with your finances? What should you be doing with all of your precious crypto, with your economic future? Well, if you ask me, you should be deciding that. And if you don't know enough to decide that, well, a channel like this should absolutely not be your resource for making critical financial decisions. My goal is to entertain and excite people about crypto, not to make your buys and sells for you. In fact, I've been reflecting so much on what goes on in crypto, and I'll be doing some content that might surprise you in the coming days and weeks about crypto, really trying to dig in and question all of the assumptions assumptions about this industry. Now I'll cut to the chase here. I still believe in and I'm totally bullish on crypto, but I don't want this to become an absolute shill fest where I'm just chucking out tickers. I want to do more to entertain, educate, and cover the industry than just covering narratives and driving attention. And that's because attention is literally the unique and only driver of value in crypto. I believe that'll change with gaming. I believe gaming is pretty much the only shot we have at truly changing that because effectively gaming has to do with underlying product value, not just attention. Now that drives attention, but right now we live in an era where attention drives value, value drives more attention, and you end up with these massive bubbles. Those bubbles ended up hurting a lot of people in 2022. So my hope is that we can align the beliefs of this channel and the strategy of content to create a more sustainable future. But what does that mean for this rally? We don't care about your ideological BS, Elliot. We want to know if we should be bidding or not. And quite frankly, I'm still in the market. And actually my percentage of my portfolio in the market has continually risen. I do believe that given the type of talk we just saw out of Jerome Powell and the Fed, that we will see a continuation of the bullishness in the market. But the reality is the underlying economy is so screwed up, I struggle to understand how inflation can truly come down if the markets just start accelerating from here. Would I like to see another bull market? Yes. But is the more likely scenario that there's a ton of chop to the upside and then eventually to the downside, and we end up with a long meandering sideways kind of up kind of down type market, more of a crab than a bull or bear, I think that's far more likely. Though if you're talking about what I'm gambling on, yeah, I'm gambling on a little more upside than anyone would believe in. Just enough to spike the proverbial punch bowl with that FOMO sauce that gets everyone just degenerate enough to rug them. Yes, I believe it'll be quite a while before we end up with a sustainable long-term bull trend. And that's why I've been playing this market with only a small percent of my portfolio. Until we're under about 20,500, it's by the dip time meaning that as the market resets a bit, I'll be adding little bits to the high conviction plays. Again, you should know enough on how to find those at this point, but I'm actively prepared and hedging for the moment that the market does run out of steam because I don't think this is the one shot beginning to a bull run. I think that there will be plenty of ebbs and flows on the way to a sustainable bull market. Slowly adding to the market, not getting caught up in emotion and FOMO are absolutely critical as the next few years are bound to be pretty rocky on the way to a full-blown bull. But the echo bubble or the return to the mean can be a very powerful trend. Like I said, I'm in the market in a small way, looking to add in a logical way on dips, but being prepared for ultimate lows that might come with a housing collapse or some sort of black swan. But until then, I don't see the party completely stopping. I see there being some more trend left in the tank, but it's important to be very aware of the fact that I don't think there's newbies entering the crypto market like they were at the beginning of 2021 or throughout 2021. This is not that kind of expansive bull run that pulls in new money. We're mostly just trading between each other. And that means that it can work for a while, but at a certain point, we do need liquidity conditions to improve. TLDR, don't get caught up in the emotion, plan very long term, and understand that the best thing for this industry would be new users joining in with hit products at the application layer. And that's why I'm so bullish on gaming, and I'll continue to talk about it, because once we have hit games out there that people love playing, there can be a true evolution of how people interact with this ecosystem. I'll be here grinding away each and every day, working towards that future and hopefully helping you keep your head screwed on so that you can have a long-term experience in crypto, not a short-term one. And with that said, I'm Elio Trades. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. We're going to be starting up this really fun new program soon, so make sure you subscribe with that bell notification on. I'll make it very clear once we start that system. And as always, I'll see you very soon on the next episode.